A warning tonight about the dangers of caffeine following the death of a teenager. Caffeine. We're constantly told how bad it is for you and how it can kill you. While that may be true to a certain extent, there's really more to it than people give it credit for. And frankly, nobody mentions the good things that caffeine can do. So let's start out with, what is caffeine? If you look caffeine up anywhere online, you'll find a few common factors. It stimulates the central nervous system and the heart, but it also helps you relax your muscles, particularly causing dilation in your veins. It's often considered a diuretic because it can cause excessive pain, and considered one of the most addictive drugs on the planet. But how does it work exactly? Here's a quick example explained not by me. <laughs> Here's what a caffeine molecule looks like. In your brain, there's a chemical called adenosine, shown here in red. When adenosine attaches to a nerve cell, it slows the nerve cell down. Adenosine is the chemical in your brain that makes you sleepy. To your brain, caffeine, which is shown here in blue, looks just like adenosine. So your brain takes in caffeine instead of adenosine. This prevents the adenosine from slowing down the nerves and you get the caffeine high. Now, while that may explain some, it's also theorized that caffeine plays a role in the epinephrine pathway. When epinephrine, or adrenaline, is produced, it goes through this process and and adenosine is eventually bound to make cyclic AMP, and then the process moves forward, and eventually epinephrine is no longer produced by the adrenal glands. But caffeine has already been shown to bind to adenosine receptors, and is also thought to block the enzyme that stops cyclic AMP. If this is the case, it's speculated excessive caffeine consumption causes adrenal fatigue, because the adrenal glands would continuously produce epinephrine if caffeine was just allowing the pathway to stay open. I can't stop! So far, caffeine is sounding kind of bad, right? Well, there's really more to it. It's not necessarily the amount of caffeine that led to his death. It's the fact that he drank all three in less than two hours. Anything in excess is typically a bad thing, and caffeine especially in excess. You're looking for trouble. I'm freaking pumped! I've been drinking green tea all damn day! <laughs> In 2014, a study was done on the effects of exercise and sport performance with low doses of caffeine. They concluded that an optimal range of caffeine to see an increase in performance in certain exercises was about 200 milligrams, which is what most pre-workouts contain. In 1994, a study was done on caffeine and cognitive performance. They concluded that caffeine improved alertness and performance on sustained attention tasks. Lastly, in 1989, they found that caffeine ingestion can help with fat loss, which would explain why it's found in a lot of fat burners. So this is just a few examples of some of the studies that have been done on caffeine, and we can sort of conclude that caffeine has good and bad factors, as with anything else in life, right? whoop de doo What does it all mean, Basil? Can you safely consume caffeine? Yes, but it should never be in excess and you should consult your doctor before trying it. If you're curious on dosages, there was actually a study from 2017 that gave a few recommendations. As for adults, it's roughly 400 milligrams total for the entire day. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you next time.